You say you'll be down in five The smell of your perfume Is floating down the stairs You're fixing up your hair like you do I know that I'll be a mess The second that I see you But you won't be surprised It happens every time It's nothing new It's always on a night like tonight I thank God you can read my mind Cause when you look at me with those eyes I'm speechless Staring at you standing there in that dress What it's doing to me ain't a secret Cause watching you is all that I can do And I'm speechless You already know that you're my weakness After all this time I'm just as nervous Every time you walk into the room
together in this holy sacrament of matrimony. So we'll begin this afternoon by bowing our heads in prayer. O oh God, who in creating the human race will that man and wife should be one, join we pray in a bond of inseparable love these your servants who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become by your grace witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Sora. Blessed the husband of a good wife, twice length are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband, peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift, bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Be he rich or poor, his heart is content, and his smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband, her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones. A gift from the Lord is her governed speech, and her firm virtue is of surpassing worth. Choiciest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste soul. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her tempered soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But do 
do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord.
you wish to be married to each other. Well, that can happen virtually anywhere. It can happen downtown at the courthouse. It can happen out in somebody's backyard. It can happen on an island. Anywhere can be performed. A wedding can be performed. But you're here. You are here within God's house. And this is a sacrament in the church, a sacrament of matrimony. And the difference between being married here and anywhere else is that in a few moments, when you take vows for each other, God will be right there with you. And He will give you a grace that, especially in the difficult times of marriage, and there aren't any difficult times in marriage, right? Anybody who's married? It's just simple, every day, right? No. In those times, the grace that you receive here is going to help you through those times. Because this, unlike a legal wedding, this is an unbreakable bond. This is a bond that God brings together that cannot be separated. He says it over and over in Scripture. So it doesn't matter how you feel towards each other at times. God is going to keep you together for the rest of your lives because you came here today to take those vows in front of Him. Now, we chose the readings, and I'm a little curious, I didn't even ask him this, the Gospel reading is not the Ten Commandments, it's not what we shouldn't do, it's the, what are called the Beatitudes, it's what we should do, and they're eight of them. Well, these are kind of tough, so if you chose this reading, maybe this is something that you should focus on during your marriage. That first one, is really very difficult. It's blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It has nothing to do with being poor financially. It has everything to do with understanding that everything that you have, your health, your love, your jobs, they are all because God has provided. And your job is to be able to give back. Not just to God, but to everybody else as well. And that's just one of the ways that you chose. This is a blessed event. Look at all the people who have come here at 1.30 on a Saturday afternoon when it's beautiful outside. And there are a ton of festivals going on everywhere. But yet they chose to be here with you, to witness this, to witness God bringing you together. This is a sign of love. It's the same love that you have for each other, that all these people here have for you. Celebrate that love. Understand what God is going to do for you right now, right here. He is going to keep you and hold you and love you for the rest of your lives together. That's what we're about to celebrate. That's what we'll celebrate every day of your life. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. 
through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the Church, I ask you both to state your intentions. Jim and Tori, do you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Good. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and His Church? Wonderful. We're off to a good start here. Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, turn towards each other, join your hands, and declare your consent before God and His Church. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Bless the Lord these rings, which we bless in your name, so that those who wear them may remain entirely faithful to each other, abide in peace and in your will, and live always in mutual charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May they enjoy their time here and have safe travels back to their homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord. <laughs> that the grace of the sacrament will be renewed by the Holy Spirit in all married persons here today. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all the relatives, for all the relatives of Jude and Tori. If the sky, then we look 
个泡，是长的脸庞，变得没有坚持，是 crumble to the sea。I won't cry, I won't cry. Sing her songs. She like goofy movies like、uh, Mermaid and stuff like that. And they sing Sandman and Mermaid songs at night. And I am more in the real world. And I would try and prepare her for that. So when they were all saying good night, I would just stick my head around the door and say, "You're ugly and your feet stink." <laughs> get ready for the real world. So.、Um, Then she went off to college, and she very independent. She went on her own. Went to Stevens Point. <laughs> she went to Stevens Point. Then she got a、uh, job in Detroit.、Um, worked there for six years. Went to.、Um, A、uh, little shoot after that. Come on, boys! And she,、uh, yeah, a little shoot, yeah. And、uh, now she's starting a new、uh, venture at Southern Door, which I, she's interested in, and, and it's good. But from the little girl on, she was real. She could handle herself. If you don't believe me, ask her. And, <laughs> Then、uh, Jim come along, of course, and uh, they uh, had their ups and downs. And of course, I feel for you, Jim. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's not like I'm losing a daughter; I'm gaining an electrician. <laughs> <laughs> and from a little girl on. And many of you people know this. From a little girl on, I've said to her a thousand times, and I've told you just a hundred, that 
someday, I've always told her this, someday you are going to make some man so miserable. I'm just sorry. Sorry to have you. Sorry. But anyway. And then Braylon, of course, he's a perfect fit. There you are. A perfect fit for our family. And he, uh, he fits well cleaning bounce houses in type. Another advantage. But anyway, uh, as the invitation said, it's about darn time, nine years, over nine years. Um, I want to make a toast. Part two. Many years. All right, let's hear it for Tom Kane out there, ladies and gentlemen. how we went to college. Um, I remember the summer before freshman year of college, I was just scrolling through Facebook, and I happened to see that someone wrote on Tori's wall saying, hey, I heard you're gonna be living in Thompson Hall. What room number? I was surprised when she replied back saying she was gonna be living in 211 because I was gonna be living in 212. So it was just by random chance that we ended up having rooms directly across the hall from each other. Never did we know that living across the hall from each other would soon change us from being more of acquaintances to being actual friends. So over the next two years, well, technically it was one and a half where I went and got hit by a truck and had to drop out for a semester. <laughs> but over the next two years, we had a lot of fun living in the dorms together. We made a lot of great memories and we became really good friends. Our junior year, we were able to live off campus, so we decided, hey, maybe we should live together. So we ended up getting a house with six other roommates. Most weren't from here. But uh, we had a lot of fun living in the house together. I remember the one day I was just sitting in the living room, probably watching Full House or something, but Tori came in the living room and uh, started telling me how she had recently started seeing this guy, Jim. She was telling me she really liked him. She was interested in seeing what would happen. But there was a few people in her life that were kind of discouraging her from pursuing the relationship any further. I remember she was just really confused and kind of didn't know what to do. I remember she turned to me and said, Tiffany, what do you think I should do? I responded back saying, do whatever makes you happy. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I said, do whatever makes me happy. If you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Every guy. <laughs> uh, I just wanted her to know that no matter what she decided to do, no matter what the outcome was, that I was going to be there for her to support her either way. So, that moment in time, I feel like changed all of our lives forever. Um, Tori and Jim, shortly after that, went from seeing each other to being boyfriend and girlfriend. And Tori and I eventually went from being friends and roommates to being best friends. Now, fast forward almost 10 years later, here we are. They are now bride and groom, and I have the privilege of standing up here next to them to be their maid of honor. So. I just want to end this by saying two things. First off, I want to say congratulations to the both of you. Um, so I have to say it's finally calm, and I want to wish you both a lifetime of love and happiness. Second off, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to Jim. Thank you for turning out to be a good guy. Thank you for always making Tori so happy, and thank you for giving me the best friend I never had. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I guess you just found off. My name is Tyler. Uh, 
I met Jim back in elementary school and uh, started hanging out probably more in middle school. And one thing I always remembered is he always seemed to know what he wanted, you know. And I remember in eighth grade he told me, he's like, I'm going to be an electrician. I'm like, Jim, you're in eighth grade, be a kid, you know. <laughs> so high school came around and he started taking electrician classes in school and I'm like, well, I, I guess he's pursuing this, you know. And, a couple years later, he gets a job in a work truck, and I'm like, oh, well, he's, he's hit her big, you know. And then when I uh, started hanging out with Tori, you knew that was another thing you wanted. And met her a few times, and I'm like, you know, it's Tori, she's, she's an ideal girl. And then, uh, you know, things were going good, made some memories, caused some trouble together. And all of a sudden, Jim goes to me one day, he's like, yeah, Tori's moving across the state for a job. I'm like, Tori, you're, you're putting a short in the circuit here, you know. <laughs> But Jim must have had some electrical tape and some wire nuts in the van and kept the current strong and sorry, sorry ended up moving back home for the love they have and uh, just want to say a congratulations you guys and best of wishes to you. years together so uh, and all of you that blame Jim it was me I didn't want to get married until I was 30 my bad um, well, we definitely want to thank our families um, especially our parents they've done a lot to help make today possible um, I know my mom will be very happy to have her house back like these lanterns take up a lot of room and they also make a lot of sawdust so dad is really excited to get his shed back um, although I've heard there's not much booze left there now, so thanks for that also. <laughs> um, but also, we just like to thank everybody that helped make today possible, that helped Jim and I make it work. Like we said, for a while there, we lived five and a half hours apart for over five years. Um, and it wasn't always easy, but we have such a great support system. Um, it really helped us become who we are and the couple that we are. And we're really happy to be here today and share with every one of you. So thank you guys very much. And uh, a toast to everybody who made today possible, everybody who came, and everybody who just wants to have fun. Here's the reaction that he wanted. He actually got it. Here's the real first dance, guys. Here's the real first dance. Nice job. Very good.
gentlemen, put your hands together for Jim and Tori's first dance as husband and wife. All right, it's now time.
put your hands together for the Mother Son Dance, everybody. All right, next up. All right, we have our Brian and Groom back to back on the chair in the middle of the dance floor. They removed both of their shoes. And I'm going to read a series of the questions, and they're going to raise the shoe for whoever it best describes. So here we go. Let's start it off. Who made the first move? Who made the first move? You can't cheat, Jim. You can't look. What is that? Wow. All right. Who says, who said I love you first? Who said I love, there you go. Now he's playing by the rules. All right. Who mentioned marriage first? Nice. Who is more romantic? All right. Who's hotter? Okay. All right. Who says I'm sorry first after an argument? Who started the argument in the first place? <laughs> Who's more organized? Who's a better driver? <laughs> Who's a faster driver? You got two tickets in a month! <laughs> Alright, who's a better cook? Who is a better cook? Who's a bigger flirt? <laughs> and who wears the pants in the relationship? Right, who's more likely to get injured? <laughs> who's more likely to be running late? <laughs> All right, who's gonna be in charge of the checkbook? Well, there you go, it's a good one to get right. Who's gonna be in control of the TV remote? <laughs> Who is messier? <laughs> All right, you have those shoes in your hand, who has the smell of your feet? Okay. All right, who spends more time on Facebook? He doesn't have it. He doesn't have Facebook, so, all right. All right, who has the crazier family? Nice. Who's a bigger baby when they have a cold? All right. All right, so now that you're married, who's going to be the first one to say, not tonight? All right, who's going to be the first one to fall asleep tonight? Who's more likely to wake up hungover? Tonight, tomorrow morning. Both of you, all right, that's a good answer. All right, who's more likely to pass gas in front of the other? <laughs> nice. Who has better taste in music? Who's a better dancer? Who am I going to see on the dance floor more tonight? Nice. Who did more of the wedding planning? Who is always right? <laughs> All right, and who do you love most in the world? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the shoe game. Big hand out there. It's time for the first dance. We can have the house. Two, three. Get through one night without you 
If I had to live without you, what kind of life would that be? Oh, I need you in my arms, need you to hold. You're my only reason. You're my only truth. I need you like water, like breath, like rain. I need you like mercy from heaven's gates. There's a freedom in your arms that carries me through. I need you. I don't need a lot of things. I can get by with nothing. With all the blessings life can bring, I've always needed something. If you There's a freedom in your arms That carries me through